This is the first battle of the second round in the Use It and Lose It tournament. I hope you've been enjoying the battles you've watched so far. Um, I have. Uh, there has been some great matches, and I'm quite interested to see which factions will be picked as the as the tournament goes on, because once you use a faction, you lose that faction. And that means that the players who open strong, like I opened with Nervii, which is a fairly strong opening, uh, the second round I won't be able to use Nervii, but in the third, fourth, and so on, I'm going to be able to use Tillis and Boyai and Rome. So let's see how far that takes us and see what players do. Now these two factions are also fairly strong picks, given the rules of the tournament. Here we have the Getai. The Getai have dash and heavy bows, dash and heavy skirmishers, so three dash and heavy bows, uh, one dash and heavy skirmisher. Then we have two, one spear, one heavy spear. Same on the other side, heavy spears, spears. Then we have two spear horse, a total of four spear horse. Up front here we have two bow horse. In the center, a strong line of four noble swords, noble sword general. And this map being the pyramids, it's a hot map, so it's going to be advantageous for quite a few of these Carthaginian units. So Carthaginian cavalry, for example, two Carthaginian cav have resistance to heat. Libyan hoplites resistance to heat, so we have two Libyan hoplites, uh, Carthaginian hoplites flank, mercenary Gallics on the flanks. Then we have a center of Libyan infantry, sacred band. Wow, that's an odd choice. Uh, and some more Libyan infantry. So, max 8 melee infantry units, a front line of two late Libyan hoplites, and of course, the mercenary Belarics. I don't think I've seen Sacred Band in a tournament game for... I don't know how long. It's, it's been a long time. Now, the Sacred Band has a decent melee attack, decent armor, the problem with the Sacred Band is that it doesn't have the Elite Spear. It's, it doesn't have the uh, armor, pier armor piercing of the Elite Spear, so it only has 5 armor piercing damage, and that becomes a very real problem against units like Thorax Hoplites. So, in my opinion, Sacred Band are a bit overpriced for what they're able to do on the battlefield. Carthaginian Hoplites, um, not much worse than the Sacred Band, to be honest. Especially not when you consider the price. So the the noble swords will trash Libyan infantry on the charge, uh, but blocking their charge and getting the Libyan infantry in because the special thing about Libyan infantry, Libyan infantry is basically like Roman infantry, but it has better armor piercing damage. Now six armor piercing damage compared to four armor piercing damage might not seem like much, but it can add up. The problem is they have reduced base damage. So, 45 weapon damage here for the Noble Swords means that the Noble Swords are going to trade extremely well with Libyan Infantry, even better on the charge. 36 charge bonus, massive charge. We'll be able to take down a lot of Libyans. And, and this bears special mention, because the Libyan Infantry, if you add up weapon damage and charge bonus, you get to, uh, let's see, 54, a total of potential damage of 54. While these... Noble Swords, they have a potential damage on the charge of 81. So that means that some of these Noble Swords are going to be able to one-shot some of these Libyan Infantry, while the Libyan Infantry is never going to be able to one-shot these Noble Swords. That is not, not considering any Precursors, because when we add in Precursors, they will be able to one-shot one of them, but the Noble Swords are much more likely to one-shot several Libyan infantry, which of course makes the follow-up fight worse for the Libyan infantry. So let's just fast forward until these guys decide to engage here. Carthage has the ranged advantage, so ideally these mercenary Balearic Slingers should get some volleys off on the Noble Swords to take down their hit points a bit. Just ignore the dash and heavy bows and fire on the Noble Swords behind. Because now the Mercenary Balearic Slingers are not even firing. And that is problematic for them. B 
because even though the the Dacians are firing on the mercenary Balearics and th now the mercenary Balearics are starting to return fire but I really think they should ignore these bows not trade with the bows and just focus on the noble swords and especially firing on on not focusing fire like this is is not a good way to trade in skirmish fights because you need to get the units off the field as quickly as possible now the dash and heavy bows are losing quite heavily against the mercenary Balearic slingers mercenary Balearics, of course they have shields they have higher armor penetration so the dash and heavy bows will take a lot of damage some sneaky bow horse running towards the back of Carthage here and getting some free shots off here killing what are they killing they're actually killing the general's bodyguard took him down quite heavily there so not uh, the best opening for Carthage. Spear horse go in frontally, knock down the late Libyan Hoplites, and get into the mercenary Balearics. Now they are going to get hammered by precursors, but uh, could be argued whether that was worth it. Do a bit of damage to the Libyans in exchange for for and do a bit of damage to the mercenary Balearics in exchange for oh, about 19 spear horse. Not a horrible charge by any means. And that's the issue with spaghetti lines. You are going to be not going to be able to stop cavalry charging you frontally. So the Carthaginian general is taking damage still. The bow horse, 18 kills here. T 32 kills. So the Carthaginian cavalry has taken a lot of damage. Well, not the Carthaginian cavalry, but the Carthaginian general's bodyguard has taken a lot of damage. Getai moving up on the flanks, need to be a bit careful here. There is some dash and heavy skirmisher support, which could come in handy if these mercenary Gallics decide to throw precursors. But the Carthaginian uh, general's bodyguard needs to be very careful here, because the general of Carthage could just die. And although there are quite a few disciplined troops, losing the general this early, like... If, if the first unit you lose is the general's unit, then you are in trouble. The bow horse come under fire from Balearics. But what could happen now is that these these uh, dash and heavy bows could actually be in range of the general's bodyguard very soon. But it looks like they don't really need to because the general's bodyguard is dying. So the Balearics haven't been able to screen effectively. We get another charge here from spear horse into mercenary Galax. And here comes the main engagement. Late Libyans rushing into Noble Swords to rob them of their charge bonus, sending in the Sacred Band as second line. But they are going to get charged and they're going to die quite rapidly. Libyan infantry running in as second line. Nicely done here. Uh, here the Heavy Spears get a charge against uh, Libyan infantry, but Libyan infantry should have no problems there. This is a problem though. Spear Horse rushing into the back of Carthaginian Hoplites. The general is off the field for Carthage. Well, he isn't completely off, but he is, um, yeah, he's dead actually. So, very, very poor start for Carthage here, losing the general. And uh, that's going to be a problem. The second band losing decisively, of course, against the noble swords. Libyan infantry getting some kills now against the noble swords, but the noble swords should be able to take it easily in the extended melee. Carthaginian Hoplite is getting around the Heavy Spears here, and the Heavy Spears are going to lose. But this is what it's all about. It's all about the central engagements with the Noble Swords and the cavalry that, uh, that Getae has in the back of Carthage. Because those rare charges, when the enemy general is dead, are, they're, they're devastating. So here you see the Libyan infantry starting to lose decisively. The Noble Swords very tired because they've used Headhunt. But they could just use Second Wind and that they do. So now they're fresh again. Very nice to be able to do that with your general. Because that means he's going to be able to win, win his fights against most units very easily. Carthaginian Cavalry gets charged by Spears. Bad time for the Carthaginian Cavalry. Pulling out and losing a lot of Cav. Getting into the dash and heavy skirmishers, but dash and heavy skirmishers are not just going to fold when hit by cavalry. They have a nice bit of armor. 
Sneaky Carthaginian and Hope Latesi wanting to join against the fight, uh, join in the fight against the skirmishers there, decides against it and now gets rear charged by the dash and heavy skirmishers. The dash and heavy skirmishers have a, a standard sword. They have decent melee stats, so they can actually hold their own in melee, especially when rear charging. But you can see what happens to the Libyan infantry. The Libyan infantry does a decent job against the noble swords, but they can't be expected to win. Sacred Band getting some kills here. Uh, the Libyan infantry getting slightly less kills for much cheaper than the Sacred Band. But it would be amazing if Carthage was able to tank this out. The Noble Sword General winning decisively against Libyan infantry and there's still infantry support for Geta in the back here. Carthage starting to waver and lose in the center with the Libyans and once the Libyans are gone uh, it's going to be very hard for Carthage to support these fights. Getting a frontal charge now in against the Noble Swords. Libyan infantry get a nice flanking attack against the Noble Swords. Libyan Hoplite screening away the Spear Horse, but there are so many Geta units, even these Dash and Heavy Bows now joining the fight. This could go well though for the Libyan infantry. We have a uh, almost full strength Libyan infantry up against uh, um, Noble Sword with 80 men. So if Carthage has any units available, well, it looks like they don't have any units available to support the fight, unfortunately for Carthage. The Libyan Hoplites losing quite heavily and at this point there's just nothing Carthage can do. Everything is engaged aside from this unit and wave after wave of Geta troops rush in to join the fights. So the, let's see, the Dash and Heavy Skirmishers, 69 kills. They should be able to get some kills in melee here against the, against the Libyan infantry. Battle Rhythm was used here by the Noble Swords. Uh, now they can use Second Wind to get their 206 kills. Very nice job um, by the Noble Swords. So, yep, it looks like Geta takes this from Carthage. Costly victory for the Geta. Danko was commanding the Geta. Hell's VIP was commanding Carthage and losing the general that early. Very, very dangerous for uh, for Carthage. Some of the Libyan infantry does a decent job. The Sacred Band did an okay job, but um, look at this. 188 kills for Dash and Heavy Skirmishers. 208, 199, 73 and 112 kills. The bows do a very good job as well, and the, the mercenary Balearics just didn't do what they needed to do in this battle. They one at the back to screen away the the bow horse would be fine and two more firing frontally just focusing on the noble swords i think that would have been a lot better for carthage because if you don't have elite swords yourself or if your elite swords are worse than your enemy's elite swords then you really need to damage the enemy's elite swords before you engage with your inferior swords you need these guys to have reduced hit points before they join the fight or they're going to just slaughter units like these Libyan infantry. And Libyan infantry are nice infantry units. It's just that they cannot hang with barbarian infantry when charging them head on. So a good idea to have some some uh, Libyan hoplites to blunt charges and such. But Carthage could actually bring more melee units here. And um, with the max eight melee, max eight melee units, and uh, let's see, Carthage. Carthage could actually bring a lot more melee than they did in this particular case. So the thing with the mercenary Gallic warriors is that mercenary Gallic warriors are worse than than the mercenary Celtic warriors because they only have a 20 charge bonus. They have a slightly higher melee defense, so they are better second line infantry. Samnites could also be an option for Carthage. So let's say they bring two Samnites, let's say they bring two mercenary Scutarii, and that's it for the melee. Now you can't spend anything else more on melee. You're going to bring some late Libyan Hoplites for engaging spears and cavalry. Um, personally, two mercenary Balearics would be enough uh, for me. Carthaginian cavalry is a good choice, especially on that map. And now you have 840 left that you can spend on whatever, really. Uh, you could, for example, take out one mercenary Scutarii bring in an additional mercenary Samnite, and now you have funds for either uh, 
an additional skirmisher, an additional cavalry unit. Um, a lot of things you can do with Carthage, just as long as you're aware that you need to damage the enemy elite barbarian swords before you charge into them. So having an elite sword yourself could potentially help, but then again they are very expensive, so I would probably prefer something, if I was going up against the Getae, I would probably pr prefer something like this with another Balearic or just another cavalry unit. So. I have more uh, more power to hunt down skirmishers and more power to stop charges frontally, but it's not certain that it would work at all, but I just think stronger melee, always good. More cav, almost always good. Uh, cheap spears, always good. Strength and armor.